Hello guys, welcome back into another video here on the Banjo Attic page. Thank you all for joining in. First and foremost, I'm gonna apologize again for taking so long to put out another video, I apologize. Today, what I wanna talk about is banjo bridges on your banjo. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is where to place your bridge on your banjo when you're first starting. If you get a new banjo and the bridge is laid down, the strings are across it, you don't know where in the hell do I put this banjo bridge at. Well, the easiest way to get a decent location of it is from your nut up here to your 12th fret, and then from your 12th fret down to here, those two distances should be the same. Now, that'll get you close to where the bridge is set. Now, once you get your bridge set down on the on the head, what you'll have to do is harmonics on the 12th string, uh, on the 12th fret. Like, you'll have to do the harmonics and then fret it, and it should be the same tone. That'll tell you whether you're sharp or flat. If you're sharp, you'll move it down towards the tailpiece. If it's flat, then you'll kind of move it up the other way. But anyways, that'll get you really close to where the bridge should be. Also, another problem I've seen people do with the bridge on their banjo, this aggravates the piss out of me, so I'm gonna put it out there. Do not adjust your action on your strings or your string height. Do not adjust it with the banjo bridge. If you want a higher action on your strings, don't raise the bridge. Generally, your bridge is set by whatever the heel cut is on your neck here where it fits up to the uh, barrel of it. <clears throat> That'll generally tell you what the height of the bridge should be. The bridge should not be used to adjust the action height on your string. There's different heights of them also. You've got, um, which you can pretty much get any height you want. There's a half inch, there's 5 eighths, 11 sixteenths, which is pretty much standard. I think about 90% of the people out there playing banjo, I'm gonna say, <laughs> use a 5 eighths. Everybody I've seen uses 5 eighths. There's a couple here and there that that use different ones because uh, uh, they adjust their truss rods to get angles and all that stuff to get a higher bridge on their banjo. So now, as far as the banjo bridge, I've seen them made out of all kinds of different materials. I've seen them made out of plastic. I've seen them made out of metal. I've seen them made out of wood, uh, like mine's maple with an ebony tip on it. You know, it just really depends on, on what sound you're looking for in your banjo, depending on what, you know, material you want to use. Uh, most people use the wood, um, and really all a banjo bridge is for is to transfer the strings, the vibration from the strings through the head of the banjo. Uh, something else too, which I haven't done this myself, and I probably need to here soon, and there's a lot of videos out there on using a drum dial on the head of your banjo to get even pressure all the way around it. That's something I have not done and I haven't checked in a while. I usually will just go around and adjust each one until the head of my banjo uh, gives me a G tuning when I tap it like that, like through a tuner. That's all I've ever really done. The more precise way to do it is to get a drum dial. Don't quote me on this. I'm going to say it's around 40 or 50 pounds of pressure uh, on your banjo head is about where it's supposed to be good. I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me. Uh, I'd have to look that up to be absolutely sure. I'm probably telling you something that's way off. <laughs> Uh, they ain't very expensive, so check those out. Now, what I was talking about as far as checking for the height up and down on your banjo, I just want to show you this right quick because I didn't want to go. But on your 12th, on your 12th fret right here, you want to check the harmonics, which is right over the, the 12th fret. You can hear that. See how that sounds pretty close to the same on the harmonic? So that's what you want to do on each string when you get your bridge down low. Uh, when you get it set to where you want, and then kind of check it by that. Now, like I said, if it's if it's uh, sharp, you move down. If it's flat, you move back towards you. Uh, and that'll set it exactly where you want it set at. Now, there's different styles of banjo bridges. There's the flat one like I use. There's compensated bridges. There are radius bridges. There's uh, Deering has a smile bridge. There's all kinds of different shapes of bridges. There's one by, uh, I'm wanting to say Pete Seeger. Again, I'll have to look that up, but I'll put a picture in the screen right here. There's a banjo bridge by Pete Seeger. It looks like the Golden Gate Bridge, like big old arms come out off and sit way up on your banjo in between string. It's a crazy looking thing. Uh, I've never used it, but it looks crazy. So you can find all different variants on the styles of a banjo bridge. Uh, the only bridge that is kind of different from any of that is the uh, compensated bridge, which means that your third string is set the furthest back from the nut and then your second and fourth string is a little bit closer and then your first and fifth string are the closest to the nut. 
helps with the annotation of the banjo. That's supposed to get perfect annotation on your banjo the way it should be. And I think that's the same idea with the radius um, bridges that are radius. It gives it, it's the same idea. It's, it all has to do with annotation. Uh, and I'm probably not saying that exactly right because I'm not good with all the exact words. <laughs> but you know what I mean. On tenor banjos and different other style banjos, the plectrum banjo, I think, it's it's a bigger deal for the compensation for those to be. I think the um, the bigger, fatter strings from the nut or vice versa. I can't remember, but it's really important. It sits in an angle on those type banjos on a lot of times. So that's the only one that really will help. And, the only time that'll help is if you have a really good ear and you can tell like the, I mean the minute of minute differences in string tones as you're playing it. Now, when I say radius, there's bridges that are radius like right here, like, like a, like a U right here, it's radius and that's the compensated bridge. There's also bridges that are radius across this way. They make them radius bridges that way because there's some companies and I think Deering does it too, that make a radius fretboard and a radius bridge. And the reason why they do that is because it'll bring the strings closer to the fretboard. It makes it easier to, makes it easier to fret a lot of times that way. And I know that a lot of the professionals who use that type of setup, because the strings are a lot easier to, to, to fret as they're playing, and they're playing for a long period of time so it don't wear their fingers out as much. And last but not least, the Deering Smile Bridge. It's a smile because the feet on the bridge are curved. Now, the reason why they do that is because they say that when your strings put pressure down on a flat bridge, that it doesn't apply direct pressure all the way across the bottom of the bridge. It leaves some what they call, um, well, how do they say, airspace in between the bridge and the banjo head, and they say that it doesn't fully transfer the strings vibration down through the head. So they made a smile bridge where the feet on it are slightly curved. Uh, that way, when you push down on the banjo head, that it pushes straight down on it and, and of course, down in the, into the curvature of the banjo head. I haven't tried one of the smile bridges. I venture to say they probably work as good as, as the rest of them do. Now, the reason why you have a banjo bridge and you want to use different ones, because it does affect the tone of your banjo quite a bit. So I do recommend if you, and again, a lot of this stuff I wouldn't worry about if you're just starting banjo, put you a flat one on there and go at it. If you're five years into it, three years into it, or you're just a savant on the banjo, then start messing around with it. But three or five years in, you know, have you a, grab you a bridge here and there, the ones that you find interesting and see if, you know, just put it on. You can do what I told you how to get it set on the banjo and then try it out and see if you like the tone of it. Some of them uh, make the banjo more rich, more crisp. Some of them make them more mellow and, you know, toned down. So. It really depends on what your taste is on what bridge you use. I've always used a 5 8 flat bridge. I've never really messed with my bridge much. Probably need to here soon uh, just to see the differences of what I like because I've messed with pretty much everything else on my banjo to try to do something different. Outside of my bridge, I've never really tried to uh, mess with the bridge much. So, uh, Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. I really do, and I'm going to try again to put out videos more frequently than I have. Uh, again, I apologize for not putting out uh, videos as frequently as I have been, uh, but thank you all for watching. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, leave me some comments on the videos. Guys, let me know what you're playing, how you're playing it, if you're loving it or not. Uh, let me know if the video helped you. Guys, with that being said, we will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.